beautiful. Great is thy faithfulness. Hallelujah. All right. We are now live on Facebook. Praise the Lord. Um, welcome everyone to God in the Midst radio broadcast. This is your Friday Night Lights edition. And I am your co-host, Pastor Mark McCoy, along with my co-host, Pastor Paul McCoy. Um, tonight, hallelujah, we are uh, going to interview another young man. Our, our theme for this month has been uh, honoring fathers, honoring fathers. And uh, with the underlying theme of Papa Don't Take, no mess. So, so that's that's what we got going on tonight. Um, I I am privileged and honored to uh, interview this young man. Uh, I've known him uh, all his life. He is my son, my second oldest son, Andy or Andrew Mark McCoy. Hallelujah! Say hi to everybody. Hey, As they everybody. Say. All right, and um, he at, is at present um, uh, working on his degree in education. Um, uh, I, I could tell a joke about that, but that's a whole nother joke. <laughs> and but he also works at the Space and Rocket Center as a, I believe his, his title is a space crew manager. If I'm calling the title right, but that, Fine. that's it's pretty close. Morning supervisor. Good morning supervisor. Yeah, yeah. But he he works with the kids at the Space and Rocket Center here in Huntsville, Alabama. So with with that being said, um, we're going to open up um, starting with questions. And um, the I lost uh, Pastor Herbert today. Uh, he was online earlier. Um, I guess I need to uh, call as we're talking. Will you text Pastor Herbert and, and tell him to get back online on the uh, Blue Jean app so that he can be along with us. Amen. Amen. So um, I, I'm going to start this off and, and, and just let him tell a little bit more about, about his work and what he does for a living. <laughs> so my function at the Space and Rocket Center is the uh, supervisor. I check in uh, staff on a daily basis, upwards of uh, 40, 50 people um, who each will have a team of about 16, um, 16 young girls and boys who are at uh, Space and Rocket Center for space camp or robotics camp or some form of, of that, uh, whether it be all the way up to Advanced Space Academy with uh, 15 to 17 year olds or as young as uh, daily camp uh, or rocket explorer experience, we call it day camp, which little kids who are five to seven years old. Uh, so I come in in the morning, check those people in um, for work, give them notes, pertinent information that they may need for their day. Um, I have a core staff, uh, three coordinators who I lead um, and delegate different duties to, such as making sure that, you know, this set of people has the materials they need to lead their day or making sure our behind the scenes staff distributes materials where it needs to be um, and making sure people are getting to where they need to be. I, I kind of uh, compare my function to be sort of a vice principal in school. I have one person who handles things that go above my scope. But normally, I, I talk to crew trainers themselves. I do discipline with trainees. I talk to parents. If parents have questions, concerns, museum guests, um, and then anything that becomes too much, then I'll escalate that to my own. Okay. Okay. Um, so, Pastor Paul, you want to jump in? Don't forget your audio is muted. Um, I was just sitting here listening to his uh to his uh audio uh resume and uh 
I was just thinking, can I, can I, can I borrow five dollars from you? <laughs> um, did you did if you didn't mention it, could you um give us a brief as far as um your as far as how long have you been working in this area? And I've been at the Rocket Center, Center um for essentially six years, uh, six full years. Oh. I started in 2011, left um to do more school. Uh, came back in 2013. I've been there consecutively since 2013. Um, oh, cool. As a supervisor, um, that is, I started off as a, what we call a crew trainer or space camp counselor, and I've moved up a couple levels since then. So my first promotion came at the end of 2014. Essentially, it was really 2015. That was when I started. And then the next year, I moved up again. So oh, cool. I've been doing my current job for basically two years. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, well, that was my question. I uh, see that uh, Pastor Herb McCoy is online. Uh, I didn't know if he wanted to uh, train, if he wanted to ask a question. Okay. Right now you you muted Pastor Herbert. Hey, how you doing tonight? Know if you wanted, to, uh, train, if you wanted to ask a question. Well, I'm, I'm I'm kind of online. Can you hear me? Pretty good. Yeah, you need to get off the yeah. telephone. I'm doing good. Am I being heard? Yes, you're being heard, but you need to turn off the telephone. The telephone conference call. Nope, didn't do that right. You hit the wrong button. It's okay. There you go. But your telephone conference call needs to be turned off and just do the video. Now unmute your video. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to God. Uh, unmute your video so we can hear you. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> we got to get this technology right. You need to unmute your video. That has to be done on the computer screen. Yeah, all right. Well, we'll go on to the next question here while Pastor McCoy Herbert gets himself back together here. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're typically interviewing fathers and and um and and, in the, and not only fathers but we've been interviewing fathers and husbands um and your present circumstance and condition is it, as it is and i'm gonna let you describe that relationship that you're in that puts you in a position as being a father and and having a relationship with this young lady well, I have um, been dating a young lady for um, four years now, and we currently live together in the same household. She has uh, two children who we are taking care of, and so that would I guess put me in the same position. Okay. Okay. Uh, how old are the children? Nine and twelve. Youngest is a girl. She's nine, oldest is a boy named Ricky Swell. Okay, give their name. Give uh, name. Noah, <laughs> Noah is 12. Uh, Naomi is. And then uh, your girlfriend. Her name is Christina. Yeah, all right. Amen. Amen. Um, so so you're in, in a, a relationship where the dynamics are not um, quite the same when it comes to uh, uh, the husband-wife situation, but you but you've taken on the role as as the father of Noah and Naomi, and uh, you know we we call them step-in dads. Uh, can you elaborate on that a little bit more? Um, well, of course, you used to preach a sermon, or you have a sermon about uh, different types of dads. Um, 
stepping dad is one who, um, when the biological father is absent, um, he steps in and performs the duties of of what the dad should do. Um, in my situation, uh, Noah's father is present. I would say in the form of um, I can't remember the, the exact name. It was more of like a monetary uh, material. Dad. Yeah, uh, stuff daddy. Stuff daddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sugar daddy. Stuff uh, daddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, in the amount of time that I've been dating Christina, spent maybe a total of three weeks with him. Okay. Um, outside of those three weeks, we've got, um, you know, phone calls here and there. Okay. So, the majority of his time is spent with me. Okay. Um, but you know he'll send him stuff. So yeah, he, he, him, his daddy, their family, they'll send him all kind of things. Um, Naomi's father, she does not know who her daddy is. She she um, will likely not meet him until she's much older. Yeah, uh, that, according to mom. That's that's called a sperm donor. Dad. Yeah, <laughs> sperm donor dad. Yeah, um, yeah. According to uh, mom, she probably has at least six or seven brothers and sisters out there. Okay. And she'll, you know, when she gets older, probably want to meet and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, so, yeah. All right. Paul, you want to follow up with something? Um, <clears throat> yes, actually, I do. First question would be, when you first met, is her name Christy? Christina, yeah. Christina. When you first met Christina, um, those that that was a few years ago, and you found out that she had two children. Um, how did that affect you in regards to your, in regards to knowing um, when you started to, I would say when you started to find out the, um, that the presence in regards to their father, biological fathers were, was less or close to none. Because as you said, one of the, the, the oldest boy, his, his father, in the term of the four years that you stated you were with her, has only been around possibly about three weeks physically, yes? Yeah. The other one is non-existent. How do you feel that affected your relationship with her? Um, did, it, did it at first, uh, was it at first a little bit sketchy? Did it cause any shifts? I mean, how, I mean, as you could just summarize your thoughts up to this point in the real in regards to being a step in as 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 is stated a step in to okay. these, these, these two children so if that makes sense yes yeah so i guess for me um first and foremost i this was not the first woman i've dated who had children so it wasn't, uh, I guess, unknown territory per se, when it comes to uh, being romantically invested with someone who has children, um, or or being attracted to someone who who has children. Um, that was something I had experienced before this relationship, um, and I knew that if I was approached with it again, that. I, I know that relationships work in different ways. Um, and, you know, you never know, you know, what, what can come from that. So, and to me, um, I wasn't going to uh, immediately, I guess, run away from the relationship just because she already had, um, I guess as some of my friends might say, ready-made family, things like that, um, or um, that kind of situation. When it comes to um, the the dynamic of having the father around, um, she was very honest. She's always been very honest about you know what's going on as far as for um, you know with dad being around or or his father situation or you know hey well you know he's gonna go see dad and then he'll be back at this time or. Um, and the other one, you know, she's not going to go see, she's not going to go see her dad, not going to see him, you know, and I, I, she 
so she will explain if, if I needed to understand why. Um, and, and when I actually was open and honest and willing to explain that situation. Um, and so I felt like her decisions as to, you know, why the, the little girl gets to see the dad or doesn't get to see the dad were, were hers um, to make and not mine to choose. Um, let me think more on it here. With with the, the beginning of our relationship, she was very open and honest with explaining how things would need to work. And I was okay with that. So we chose to uh, continue to pursue our relationship. Does that does that answer the question fully or yes, yeah. yes. It, it, it yeah, it gives me insight on uh, on the uh, on your status of the relationship is that and I guess to summarize in my how I see it, she has she's made some decisions and she's been upfront with you in her decision making. And yeah. since you actually which I kinda which I figured that, that you had you had been in a relationship before because usually a lot of usually a lot of males are very hesitant, especially when they find out that there is a um that there are children involved because a lot of males do not want to deal with the father perspective. Having another or even being mature enough to actually take on that responsibility. And in that, I guess we move to the next question. As far as your relationship, how do you see it now, um, right now, as opposed to the four years ago? I mean, do you feel like it has increased for the better? Has it stayed the same or has it decreased? In the quality with, of the relationship with your children, with my relationship with the children, has it de has it increased, decreased, or stayed the same? Uh, yes, def definitely increased. Um, I know that time spent with children is probably the the main factor of developing a relationship. It's not, you know, you know, you can you can throw stuff at them all day, um, or you know, you can you can tell them things all day, but if there is a person physically present, then that is what matters the most. There's a um, the movie. There's a movie with oh, what's that movie called? Um, it's the new Nemo movie, and they got there. There, it's the Finding Nemo, Finding Dory movie, and in Finding Dory, there's this little uh, bird that helps the uh, Nemo and, and his brother find to get back in contact with his dad. The bird's name is Becky. And they're like, you got to imprint on Becky. You look at Becky in her eyes, you go woo, woo, woo. And once you imprint on her, she is now your friend and she's con she's connected with you. So, and I know with, with kids, you imprint on them by spending time with them. Um, so over the last four years, there's just being there, being present in general. Um, is going to uh, give us a deeper connection versus, you know, me just being some guy that showed up, you know, four years ago and then I, I left. So I would definitely say uh, the connection has gotten uh, way deeper than it was four years ago. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I think we'll, yeah. I was going to ask Pastor Herbert to unmute his line and he can jump on in. Yeah, I, I had some technical difficulties. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I found that my, uh, I found that, that my, my, my network is not working upstairs. I just had it installed not long ago and I'm not, it's not operating upstairs. So uh, I guess you shouldn't wait until you've got to do something in order to do something. <laughs> and, uh, I, I guess really, I, I guess that's really what I want to, I want to, I, I want to ask about. I want to Andrew talk a little bit about. I've been at this thing about 45 years in marriage now. I don't think uh, 
Mark is very far behind. Maybe a decade or a little bit more. How, and I heard you say, talk about a little bit, but how do you get ahead of this? How, I mean, in this relationship, how can you get ahead? Because it sounds like you might be a little bit behind, but how do you get ahead of it? And, and, and I'll describe what I mean by ahead. If, if, if you're shooting at a target that's moving, you can't shoot at it where it's at. You got to be going a little bit in front in, in order to hit it. Because if, you, if you're shooting for where it's at, uh, by the time you get done what you're thinking about doing, it's going to be gone. The opportunity is missed. So I, I, I'm asking in, in, in this relationship, what are you doing? Uh, ahead of this, I mean, what, what's where is this going? You know, you, you you talk about the things that you're doing. You talk about the things that you're doing for the kids. You talk about the behind the mission. You ain't in essence, you ain't just somebody that's there, but you've been there. You ain't gone. But so what are you doing uh, to get ahead of this thing? Because it, it sounds to me. Like you're gonna have some teenagers, and not only teenagers, teenagers are not as bad as having grown folks. <laughs> once you get grown folks, it ain't nothing you can do no more. You, you really can't remember to sit there and watch. But what are you doing to get ahead of, of, of this one? In this um, relation? My current, I guess, goals to get ahead are um, to establish myself monetarily and in my educational goals as well. Um, while I'm in the relationship, I also have, um, and I have goals, for the relationship, I have personal goals that I need to um, attack that will assist me in my relationship goals. So I'm chipping away at those personal goals and when and by doing so it also helps me to get ahead of my relationship goals as well um to be more specific trying to get my school taken care of trying to uh or attempting to to save more money things like that um so that i can do things in a way um that is pleasing, pleasing for, for myself. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna ask it a different way. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. I, I need to press a little bit. Let me. I'm, I'm gonna press it, but then I'm gonna let no. you press more. Hold, 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 hold it, hold it. Hold All right, don't press. Press. I'm sorry, because he's telling me what he's doing. But I, 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 what I'm asking you is. If there are some traps that you've laid ahead of now, what, what have you done? What's out there? What, what have you done so that when when that time comes, you already got a fix for it? It's already laid there. It's all it ain't something you're trying to do. You catch what I'm saying? It, I, I'm not talking about trying to do it. That's the now. What is out there? What have you laid out there for times to come? That's already there. I, I ain't telling you, you, you got now handle. Now it's cool. But I, I, I'm talking about what have you laid out in front of this relationship? I, I mean, I, 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 well, I press it like this. Is there a certificate involved somewhere? Exactly. You know, I, 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 you know I, 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 I got a press. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, so you can do some teenagers. You can yeah. do some grown folk. It, it, I mean, when when they get out there, what's out there? Uh -huh. that, that's uh -huh. not impressive. You, you, yeah. you catch yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And, I'm and, saying. and what I want to add to it when he answers is this. You riding a horse. 
but the wagon ain't hitched. What you gonna do when the Indians come? <laughs> that, that's that's where I think you're going. Yeah. Are you preparing for the Indians? No. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, in in this type of situation, um, there, I I don't have a a, a, a trap or a snare per se, that I've laid out ahead of the race, um, you know, building as I go. Um, well, I'm, I'm laying, you know, tracks as I go along, hammering it out. Um, uh, you know, it, the, the, best I, the best I can do is, you know, either ask, you know, those before me, what tracks, what tracks did you lay out ahead of time, you know, pray on it. And then you know, do what I, do what I feel is is best for me to do. So, I, I know Mark said he want to pray. I, I know that, but let, let me put it this way. Okay, so you've seen some men in your family. You know what the men in your family have done. You know where the men in your family are at. Um. And it's been difficult for us to get to where we at. It's been difficult. Then you know where your mama is. Okay. So, so do you, you? How many kids you got right now? How many kids are you responsible? Two. Are they male or female? One of each. One boy, one girl. He, he wasn't on live when you. Oh. oh, okay. Yeah. So there's a nine-year-old girl. Her name is Naomi, and a 12-year-old boy, his name is Noah. Okay. So, is this where you want the two of them at when they turn 30? I put it like that. You know, when they turn 30, is is, is this is this what they're gonna look at to be as you are? And and see now, a lot of times, you know. Adam, Adam says, because of that woman you gave me. But see, Adam's responsible. So I, I, I'm asking you, man, you know, is uh, 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 you're responsible for these children. You're responsible for these souls. Are they to be just as you are now? If, if they're 30 years old and they are pretty much self-sufficient um, minus, you could say, crippling school loan debt. <laughs> if, they're, if they're 30 years old and they're, yeah, minus crippling, crippling school debt and they're self-sufficient and they are um, either attempting to raise a family, uh, living, uh, single, I would be perfectly, perfectly fine. I would be perfectly fine. Like I like in in my opinion, um, if they're doing much better than I am, that's fine. If they're you know at the level where I am now at thirty, I'd be pretty happy. Uh, if if I look at it from a comparison angle, okay, um, a lot of my contemporaries are living with parents, or they don't currently have a house or they're making you know less i mean there, there's art people who are making more and all that kind of stuff and they're not living with their parents and they've got you know two or three degrees already um but with those two or three degrees they also have you know sally may riding their back and they working at you know walmart or something like that you know um which is not not to say it's a bad thing but you know they're not doing what they set out to do uh, in the beginning. Um, but I feel at this point in my life, I am satisfied with where I am. I know that I have more I want to do, um, which I'm going to continue to, to seek and strive for. And if my kids are at where I am, 15, 16, you know, whatever it is, what is it, eight, 18 years from now, 
plus, um, I would be I would be okay. But I know that my influence on them and their mom's influence on them will probably have them doing uh, more. So so let let's let's bring this thing into uh, the elephant in the room. <laughs> the gorilla sitting on our chest. Right. Uh, you're in a relationship with a lady that has two children. Y'all live together, y'all in a home. How does that line up with the word of God? That as in from your perspective, your understanding. Yeah. So, I mean, of course, um, when it comes to what I was taught, what I've read, it's, it's, not, it's not correct. Um, if you are in a relationship with a woman, you want to um, essentially be married and be together uh, if, if we're living together, per se. Um, so it, it doesn't line up. That's true. So, so you understand that perspective. Yes. Um, so I'm pressing, and I, and I told you I was going to press uh, because I want people to hear this. So, how do you justify not having a forward plan in place? I, I ain't talking about your past. I ain't talking about your present. Uh, what? Pastor Herbert was asking you is what what are you what's your moves forward? Okay. And and, and I'm pressing on that because um, as you have already said, you're not in line with the way God does things. And, and, and what is your plan to deal with that? And what are the pitfalls and problems that you have? because you are not in line with God's word in this relationship with this young lady and her two children. Okay. <laughs> Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, come on in, Paul. If you don't mind, because uh, I... I, I, <laughs> I, I, I just wanna... Oh, I, I, I'm not here now. Now, no, Andy, I'm not, I'm not here to... I'm not here to press on you. But I, I I promise you I'm not, because I I, I already I, I I know who you who you up against because they do me the same way. So uh, and mine is way, and mine is and mine is way worse. So I mean you know I so I'm I'm I feel you, I feel you. I know what you're dealing with, but <laughs> I guess one of the questions I would have. I don't know if this was asked, but have you and Chris had a conversation in regards to where you both are when it comes to marriage? Yeah. Um, uh, you have? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's we, good. We, I just, we, we, sure we, talk about marriage. we talk about marriage. Uh -huh. We talk about uh, marriage plans, all that kind of stuff. And there's, good. A, specific, there's a specific way we, we want to do that. Um, uh -huh. So that's one of the things I'm working for. Okay. Okay. Well, all right. That, that was my. That was one of the of the questions I had to try to uh, push in there. That there was a discussion made, you know, because I I understand was asking were you in alignment with in yourself and with the word in regards to your future with with this young lady. Yet, it's always it's always good to know, are you both on? In some sort of a, you both in some sort on one accord in regards to what you're about to say when, you, when it comes to answering your dad's question, because mm -hmm. you're you are is not that's an imbalance as you know yes, and yes. and you don't want an imbalance, and, and and that's the thing. Of the, thus, as the word of God tells us to do things decently and in order, we want to make sure that that there is a that you have. You are both all in regards to where you're going. That's my. That's the only thing I would. 
you know, not like I said, I, I know what you're going through. I feel you. But uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a mute and let you just kind of go back and answer that question that you that you uh, that your dad posed. Okay. I, I got some addition, man. I, I got some addition. I, you know. Oh, Lord. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, you know, the, the thing of it is, I, and I, I heard you say y'all have been talking uh, and, 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 and you've been discussing. Uh, but as I said, you know, uh, Adam and Eve had a discussion. But, you know, it is the responsibility of a man in a relationship. It is a man's responsibility. Uh, I mean, I, 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 and I, I know my own mother's listening. Uh, I, I know I got some sisters that are listening. And, 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 and I'm not talking about uh, men being greater than women in any fashion. We, we have equal value. But there is a role for men uh, in this world. And the role that you're, you're doing right now is one that is, is setting forth a path for the two children that God has given you to be responsible for. Not only that, but for the soul of this lady that you're with. Uh, bypassing discussion, there's something that I'm, I'm sure you know that needs to be done. You've seen your mama do it. You've seen your grandmama do it. You've seen other people that have gotten married, and then some of those marriages didn't stay together. And, and we can look at those that didn't stay together and say, well, we don't need no piece of paper. But, you know, when, when you're at your job, and, and, and this is a situation that I'm sure happened, there are, are some, some workplace parties. So when, when, when y'all go to the workplace party, you know, it's like, Okay, well, I want y'all to meet this lady. This is the lady I'll be kicking it with. <laughs> you know, uh, this is my roommate. <laughs> you know, uh, this is the mother of the children uh, that I help take care of. Rather than this is my wife. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I'll tell you, the Bible says that a man that finds a wife finds a good thing. Woman ain't supposed to be looking at no husband. You know, it is the man's responsibility. I know I ain't never talked to you about this before, you know, uh, but, you know, I I just look forward to the men in this family doing that which is honorable. I look for, for the men in this family to set forth a path uh, that is, uh, uh, that's laying a trap for those to come to say, I got to do this, and, and I don't evidently I don't know if maybe myself and your father haven't laid the trap for you well enough, or, or maybe your grandfather hurt uh, didn't lay the trap for you well enough for you to fall into it and grasp a hold of it. I, I don't know uh, what is it that we didn't do, that, and that, that's why I want to press to what, what is it? Come on, come on, Pastor Herbert, come okay. on. So, so what, what well, is it that I, we didn't do to have you? Because you, you ain't never been married. Have you ever been married? That's true. I have not been married. Okay. All right. What what didn't we do? Help us. <laughs> so, I mean that that would lead me to say something. You know, like I could be like, well, with all of your children, were you married when you had all your children? I know. My dad wasn't married when he had all his children, so we could we could go there, but it's not that's not my place. I feel to you know say like oh well you know this is what uh, was uh, what well, this is what happened before me you know. So I know it, at my point for from my from my perspective, I currently do not have any children. I am a a man who is dating a young lady with children. And I have at this point not married her. And so I'm slow, you know? <laughs> so uh, I was a late baby, you know? So, uh, but 
outside of that, I, I wouldn't say that there was, you know, a, a bad example laid or, or, you know, you haven't done something. Um, it's more so I have to make my decisions for me um, and what, what works best for me at this time and what's going to work best for me um, into the future. So it, it may be that, you know, well, I, I haven't laid out certain things down the line at this point, um, but I feel like the way I'm headed right now is, a, is still a good direction. Spoken like a true McCoy. <laughs> so, so I'm, I'm gonna... I, I got to tell you, my son, my son, he, he's married, but he said the, the very similar same thing to me. You know, you know, his decisions are his decisions, and he's doing what he's doing because he can see what's best for his life. So that that's that that that's very well said, and and, and thank you, thank you for for saying it like that. Uh, I, I can, I, I got a great appreciation. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to press the tail end of that, of my question, because you answered the first part, I believe, pretty well. The tail end of it is, what's the pitfalls being in this present situation yeah. and not being married? I'm going to say it exactly like that. Yeah. Like that. So I guess uh, one that's that's been on my mind because uh, dad said it. Pastor Mark said it um, not too long ago. It was it was the control. Um, I wouldn't say I'm a control freak, but when I don't have, um, if I make a plan and the plan flexes and changes from what I initially stated and what I communicated, it is very frustrating, uh, especially like in my job. You know, I, I talk to my team, we make a plan for this and this and this and this and this situation, this scenario. And then when it changes because of uh, a superior who I did not have to discuss my plan with, who was not involved in the planning phase, decided they wanted to do something different, you know, that's that's frustrating. I go with it, you know, yes, sir, yes, ma'am. Let me do what I got to do to, you know, to complete the task. But at the end of the day, there's going to be some venting going on, you know. Um, when it comes to this, um, pitfalls would be, you know, if you're married, man is, quote, unquote, head of the household. That's not to say that men and women are equal. It's not to say that in a marriage, you know, they're equal, um, that, 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 you know, the man and the woman are equal um, regardless of, of money or, you know, intelligence, all that kind of stuff. But um, daddy says stuff. It lines up, you know, dad's like the umbrella to protect the household, you know, and then the rest falls underneath the umbrella, right? Um, what affects that now is because we're not married, she's mom, what mom says goes, which I mean, and, and from my experience, that's always the true part anyway, when mama says go, mama, what mama says is what's happening. Like, you know, in, in my household, dad can say something, but if mama say something, that's what's happening. If mama not happy, then nobody in the house happy. That's how it goes. I'm pretty sure you, you both have experienced that, and married men, family men everywhere will tell you if mom's not happy, the house is not happy. So, um, so I, could, I could say that I'm going to do this and this with the children, and they could run behind me, and they could go talk to their mama, and you know and we may not have communicated that it was going to happen that way and she'll tell them to do something different and that's what they do and that could be frustrating um other than that um other pitfalls i guess are um i feel like you know monetary discussion sometimes but we're both very um very clear with with you know how much we're making and what we're spending it on and where we're spending it all that kind of stuff um but i feel like you know if we were married and had joint accounts things like that would be different um let's see 
I guess I guess that would be like the the I guess the main frustrations or pitfalls I guess you could, uh, of, of the the type of relationship I'm in. Um, other than that, it's, it's happy most of the time. Let me, I need to ask you a couple of questions behind that. Do, do you tie? Do I tie? Yeah. Not enough. No. Yeah, no. No, 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 no. That's a yes or no question. I said no. Yeah. I said Thank no. you. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, are, are you committed in a relationship with a church? As of right now, no. Okay, so it 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 sounds like there might be a, a little bit of a of a thing of of, of uh, where your commitments are, but I, I want I, I must relate this to you uh, that regardless to how a man is in a household, he's still the head. He's still responsible. Um, I, I, in, in in my household, uh, my wife is always given directives about different things, and it is. It, I mean, being the head, that means I'm gonna make it happen, <laughs> just the way she wants it, 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 as much as I possibly can. That's what being the head. The head doesn't mean I'm domineering or dominating. That doesn't change with with, with marriage, but. Uh, I, 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 I wanted to let you, you know that piece uh, uh, because there's some things that, that, that's coming up. There's some uh, commitment that I'm, I'm not hearing from you. Uh, and, and in those things, so if it, it, it's not, I guess it's not terribly different that you're not uh, committed in a marriage relationship. And I guess your dad asked the question about your relationship, uh, uh, pretty much with 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 God. So you know, a, a, as it goes, uh, I know you're getting to where uh, God would have you, because God don't make no jump. I, I'm not saying that uh, your relationship is a bad or wrong relationship. Uh, I was just ascertaining as to what it is you look toward doing. Uh, in the future, and 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 with God's help, what trap have you laid? You know, uh, and and I'll tell you, you can do some nice trap laying with the word. Very true. You know, you you, you can make a lot of future plans, and but you got to be in the word, you know, uh, in, in, in in order to do that. What what is the? I, I, I'm, I'm gonna ask this, and now I'm gonna leave you alone. I, I know time is about to end, but. But what is the what is the greatest fear in your life right now? My greatest fear, I think, would be the first thing that came to my mind was losing um losing my my I guess financial stability I have at the moment I guess um if I wasn't able to to work and support myself um that's like my my daily worst fear I feel like other things that were to happen I'm I'm kind of mentally prepared for um so I, I feel like I would be able to to deal with those things if I were to let's say tomorrow were to you know be fired or I got into a wreck or something like that and I couldn't work and I couldn't pay my bills I couldn't you know <laughs> support myself and my family that would put me I guess at a place uh, close to rock bottom because it's like oh man like. You know, it's a it's a starting over kind of thing um, at this point for something I've built throughout my twenties. Um, that and that's and what's what's crazy. I, I saying it it feels kind of shallow, you know, 
um, because that's 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 one thing. Um, it's like, hey, you know, it's just a job. Just a job is, you know, something like that. But if that if that were to happen, I feel like that's like my my biggest thing. That's that would be like, I you know, when I pray, I pray about my family. I pray about um, protection for for my family, for my friends, and things like that. And then I pray that I do a great job at work. You know, <laughs> I pray for strength to be able to succeed, to be the best, and all that kind of stuff because I have plans for how I want to be there. Um, and if I wasn't able to do what I'm currently doing, because not only am I, I feel like I'm good at what I do, um, I enjoy it. I know there are many people out there who don't enjoy it and, um, who don't enjoy what they do when they go into work. So they have to do something different for a while while I try to find something else I enjoy with the, ugh. <laughs> so. Paul, you got something? Uh, yeah, yeah, I do. Um, I would, I would say, the statement would be, um, a warning to you. And and one of the one of the, it's a it's a common it's a common thing. Yet it's still unfortunate that many. Many of us in this world have the same fear that you have. And ultimately your fear is, it's not really about losing your job. It's really about losing control. And one of the things I've learned is, especially in my, my age now, you know, everything that I've been through um, in my life, all that I've, all that I've lost, all the dark places I've had to go through. One of the things I've learned is that I have no control over anything. And the once I learned that, then I came to a, a great revelation that God has control over all things. If you lose your job right now, you would be just fine. And you know why, because God has it all under control. My warning to you would be this. Don't allow, do not allow your desire to control you, control, control you. Because right now, basically what you're saying is, is that that's what your biggest fear is. It, it, and it's, and don't think that it's not a fact that you're coming down at you or any of that. It's just that I've been there. And it took me some time to get from that place. It's not easy because the world tells you, it tells you every single day and everything that you do in every aspect of your life that if you don't do it this way, then you're going to lose. And it's difficult to tell you that that's not true when the whole world says it is. So simply put, don't let your Fear of losing control, control, because it will, and it will, it, it will put you in a place. Because when you speak that, the enemy that is listening says, "Challenge accepted." I'm gonna, I'm gonna see just how far I can get him to go, and a lot of men go through this, and it's not uncommon. Just be mindful, be mindful. Because your fear, your fear, your fear has the ability, and sometimes it will come back to haunt you and to try to take you down. So, like I said before, even if you did lose that situation, you lost your job, you'd be all right. You'd make it. Your lifestyle would change, but not your life. And a lot of people do not understand that there is a difference between living a life and living a lifestyle. Yeah. So that's all I got to say about it. And, and I I understand that completely. So like I, I know I feel like my, my faith is at a, a high enough level or, or I have enough understanding of it 
such that I know that um, that I'll be taken care of in that kind of situation. It's it's always that uh, that unseen factor per se, and I know that faith is believing in what's not there. So um, so the 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 wall, the stuff that's on the other side of that wall is like, oh, okay, you know, I know it could, the other side of the wall could be, you know, the the green grass, you know, gold streets, all the other kind of stuff. And I had to, you know, you know, lose what's on this side of it just to get there. Um, but, you know, outside of, outside of that, like the the other things that could happen um, you know, I know that, you know, those are things that are a part of life. So, and it's, it's not a, I guess I'm not fearful of, of other type of things that could happen. So, but I definitely understand. The thing that comes to my mind right now is, is, is the scripture in which my mom often quotes and considers her favorite scripture and it's one that that um I have leaned on tremendously um in, in the last 20 years of my life especially um and it and it says um this is Solomon talking to his son he says trust the Lord with all your heart lean not unto your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him he will direct your path um i am at a point in life that i trust him more than i ever did and i'm learning to trust him even more okay so so um I, I, I want to say this before we go on with questions, because I got a couple of more questions. I, I, I'm proud of you as a as a man. Um, we have a family saying that says that um, you're not an adult until you're completely independent of your parent and completely dependent upon God. Um, your fear is that you mentioned losing your job so that would take you off of being completely independent of your parents because you know you have that safety net uh, of parents that that will step in and do whatever needs to be done but the dependent upon god is to understand even when your parents are gone and that safety net is gone you have God. And so at 30 years old, um, that's a, a marvelous thing to learn and to understand. And that and I'm just sharing that with you. That that's a father talking to his son. Okay. Um and and I applaud you. Um, um as I told you, uh, we had other people plan to come on tonight, and the two other people were each had situations that that prevented them from coming uh and i called you and you stepped up to the plate and i i did tell you that this is going to be pressing <laughs> uh, uh because uh we can't ask you this the, the simple question like what would, if you could go back to you were 21 what would you be because you kind of already answered that, but we're going we're gonna to press that question a little bit more. Um, and this is how I want to press it. Um, at 30, because 21 is just nine years ago, but at 30, what regret do you have that if you could go back so when you was 21, would you tell yourself to avoid those regrets or even pitfalls? I opened up a JP Morgan uh, Chase mutual fund account when I was 18, and I took the money out 
at 19, and I would have kept that money in there. <laughs> that's my regret. That's your regret. Everything else is that's a part of life. Like everything else I've done <laughs> from, from here, from 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 you know 15, 20 up till now, that's a part of life. But I had a full five hundred dollars in a mutual fund account when I was 18, and I would go back and I would oh. I want to slap 19 year old me and be like, keep that money in there <laughs> um, because the portfolio had oil money. It was, it was some tech companies in there, all that kind of stuff. And I might be rolling in dough right now. And I would have, I would have zero debt. Nobody would have debt and schools would be paid for. And I'm really upset about that. Um, so, Oh, sorry. <laughs> and I, uh, yeah. Can, 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 can I? Can I? I need to offer an observation, uh, and I, I, I want to say this before we before, because I know you're going to be closing up this part in a minute. But I want to give this observation to you. I, I don't know if you realize it. Your father is the first man in this family to go uh, all the way through college. I, I, I mean, through without a break, go from high school to college and then to finish. Uh, most of the McCoy men that I've ever known, and as well as, well as Martin, uh, it's hard to finish high school in the first place. Uh, and, and some finish, many finished high school at some point or another. And, and many have, have went on to do some college work. Okay, but uh, your father is the first one, the first man in the family uh, known to me to actually go all the way through high school and then go through college, have fun while he did it, you know. And I said, dang, I could have had fun, you know, watching him go through it. Uh, and then, as, 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 as he just said, he's able to offer a safety net for his family. Uh, we never, ever, 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 I don't know of, of a man in the family Oh, that has had a safety net. Uh, you know, we we had to struggle in the past, and it was always thing. Uh, and I had to also be not concerned about losing a job, but the thing of it is to keep a second job. You know, that's how we learned the role. We always kept two jobs. It maybe even three and do something on a weekend. For the past yeah. five years, that, for the past that, that, five that, years, that, I've had to. Yeah, that, 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 that's how, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So you got that. You got yeah, that. So yeah. that, that's, that's part of, uh, 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 of the way that we roll. And I wanted to offer that observation to you. I, I, I know that, I, I know that you're a blessed man uh, to have it going on like that. And I say like this. For your dad to have it, I got some, your dad to have it going on like that. I got a son, and I got a son-in-law uh, who, who don't they don't have to work for one job, but they sometimes do two, and, and they make crazy money. Uh, and and so I'm watching the generation, and, and I'm hoping that this generation coming, and that that generation that comes after uh, uh, you all, that you know there is some entrepreneurship in there. Uh, because we, we know how to work jobs now. We, we know how to work jobs, but we need to be able to start leaving uh, a legacy uh, behind that has our names on it. Just like you said, Bob, you got to let that $500 in there. You, you, you have a legacy right now uh, that will go far beyond your years. But I, I just wanted to, 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 to lay that in there uh, before he ended the show. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, the last, the last three things, the last question here for, from this portion on the video. Uh, if you can name three characteristics that you consider the most important characteristics to being a man, because that's who you are, uh, 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 you, you're playing the role as a step in dad, uh, and you're looking forward to being a husband. 
what are the three main characteristics that you feel are the most important as in that role? Um, number one would be God fearing. Um, number two would be consistent um, or consistency is important. Um, number three Hmm. Loving comes to mind as number three, but that's that's yeah, it. Got to be number three. Yeah. yeah. So so elaborate on each one of them. Why you um, think? God fearing is important because you know, as a man, as a husband, as a leader of the household, you need to be led by God in the things that you do. Um, so that. That's the number one, um, and that's that's what's most important. Consistency is important um, because you need to be consistently, you know, with your family or with your kids, with your wife, um, and and be around. Um, and I feel like that is one of the most important things to be, you know, if you're consistently God fearing and consistently loving all that kind of stuff that builds some, some excellent characteristics in your children. And then loving is, is very important to be loving to your kids, to your wife, to others, to the world in general. Um, okay, yeah. amen. Anybody else want to follow up on questions on that? Okay, um, if not, we, we're, we're going to end our, um, let me slide in, we're going to end our, um, Facebook portion um, where we're broadcasting live. Um, we thank Andrew Mark McCoy for um, coming on this broadcast. Um, I think this is a, a very enlightening broadcast because we got a young man and, and we got two old men and another young man interview him. I'm giving you the young man thing, Paul. <laughs> but you old too. <laughs> and 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 uh I, I think we've asked pertinent questions and, and I believe we've also gave very pertinent uh uh perspectives for you, Andrew, as a as as a man on on moving forward. Um and I think that um this this video this this conference this conversation and interview uh is going to help many men uh, who are at that that age that you are at 30. um and 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 unfortunately we know that there are some older men that are walking this same path that you are and they don't have any clue of of their steps forward but i believe you do um again as your father uh, I have to say this so everybody can hear me. I am very proud of you. I'm proud of all of my children. Uh, my older son, DeAndre, my two younger daughters, Christina and Candace. And as a father, I, I, I know I say I love you a whole lot. Um, that's something that you hear from me very, uh, very often. But there's something about when dad is saying, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Uh, that that's that's a that's an affirmation that that many adults still are are striving for today. Um, no, we're not responsible for validating you. Uh, that's between you and God. Uh, but an affirmation from your parent or an elder. Is is something that that uh, when you receive it, you know it's real. So so we thank you for coming on the broadcast. Um, those who are on the conference call, uh, start pressing your number one key uh, because uh, I know that you all have some comments and some questions for for Andy and and even for others on the panel. 
those of you who are on Facebook, uh, the conference call number when we're getting ready to go into overtime is 619-639-4733. Again, the number is 619-639-4733. We're getting ready to go into the overtime period. And in overtime, we open up the lines for people to uh, give questions that are not on the panel and not on the video. And, and so we, we go a little bit while longer and we have it going to have a great time with that. So with that being said, uh, I want to close out uh, the video, but I'm not closing out the conference call, just the video, um, just with a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you. We thank you for this opportunity to sit down with this great young man, Andy Mark McCoy, my son. I love him to death, and I know you love him too. You love him to life, and I got to say, stop saying I love him to death. I love him to life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And, Lord, we just thank you for all the young men and women who are going to be listening to this broadcast at a later time. And we just ask you, Lord, help them get an understanding that they might get wisdom. Help them to get wisdom that they might be able to truly reverence and fear God. Help them, Lord, that they might crush you and be obedient and obey your word. We love you, Lord, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Conference call, get ready. Facebook, remember always, you're blessed and to be a blessing.